Welcome to Redeemer's Lutheran Church virtual service on this seventh Sunday of Easter. I would like to thank all those who are continuing sending in contributions either through the mail or through the online link above my left shoulder. For this Memorial Day, I would like to thank all of current veterans who are serving our country. Also, I would like everyone to remember all those veterans who made the greatest sacrifice defending our country. Thank you, and you have a blessed week. Good morning, Redeemer family. Uh, it's Corey, and I was watching last week's announcements, and I saw Dan, and I thought if he can get you guys to have a little bit of fun with this, I can have a little bit of fun with this too. So, it is graduation season. That's why I'm wearing my graduation cap. I found it. I have two tassels. I don't know if that means I graduated twice. I don't know. I also got, hold on, because I got to show you everything, my, my nice little ropes. I think this meant that I was an honor society, but it is graduation season, and we have some members of our congregation who are graduating from college or from high school or from middle school or from elementary school. We've got lots of people who are moving on to the next chapter in their lives and we want to be able to recognize that. We're not together to find out, oh, you know, how so-and-so doing, what's going on with them? Um, so we wanna make sure that we can acknowledge those folks. So I'm gonna put my little finger up here and maybe we can get a email that you can send things to or you can send it to deb in the office you don't have to send it to me um but if you could let us know who your graduates might be uh their name and where they're graduating from so that we know what level to acknowledge them at um that would be great you can as i said send them to me uh cory c-o-r-i at h-v-c dot r-r dot com or you can send it to uh deb in the office and i'll make sure she gets it to me um, so congratulations to all those people who are working hard. We know you're not going to get the traditional send off that you might've been thinking and hoping of, but we, uh, definitely are proud of you and wish you the best in whatever comes your way after this stage that you're in. So thanks and have a great day.
today is from the book of Acts, the first chapter. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time? Is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Here ends the reading. The Psalm today is Psalm 68. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. Sing to God, sing praises to God's name. Exalt the one who rides the clouds. I am is that name, rejoice before God. In your holy habitation, O God, you are father to orphans, defender of widows. You give the solitary a home and bring forth prisoners into freedom. But the rebels shall live in desert places. You sent a bountiful rain, O God. You restored your inheritance when it languished. Your people found their home in it. In your goodness, O God, you have made provision for the poor. The second reading is from the first book of Peter, beginning at the fourth chapter. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves, keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary the devil prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter. After Jesus had spoken these words to his disciples, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord. A number of years ago, when I was teaching confirmation, the confirmand asked me a pretty good question, actually, and it was kind of funny, too, at the same time. He asked me, Pastor, when did Martin Luther become a Lutheran? <laughs> well, I, I kind of smiled, and I said, well, Martin Luther was always a Luther as part of the Luth his Luther family, but Martin Luther was a Roman Catholic. Martin Luther was never a Lutheran. Martin Luther's followers later on called themselves Lutherans. The same is true when we look at Jesus. Jesus was never a Christian. Jesus was a Jew. His later followers called themselves Christians, in other words, followers of Christ. When we look at ourselves, how do we, we identify ourselves? Oftentimes we'll identify ourselves through our heritage, where we came from, where our families came from. So I'm a mixture of being Irish and Scottish and a little Swiss in there, too. I sound like a sandwich in a pub. I'm an American. I'm a New Yorker. Now I'm a resident of Lincoln Park, of the town of Ulster, outside the city of Kingston. Of course, I'm a husband and a father. I'm a brother. I was a son. Even though my parents are deceased, I'm still their son. I'm a pastor, I'm a therapist, and the list goes on, and all of us could have those lists too, and we do. And how we identify ourselves is often 
based on our heritage, based on our occupation, based on our role that we may be having. But all of us in faith-based communities can all say we're all children of God. We're all daughters and sons. But I would even be, go further than that. I would say, based on this gospel reading for today, that Jesus is saying all of us that the Holy Father has given him, all of us are sisters and brothers. All of us are part of the human world. All of us around the world, no matter where we're from, whether it's somebody who lives in Ethiopia or someone who lives in Oshkosh or someone who lives in Burma or Argentina or pick a spot around the globe, all of us as human beings are sisters and brothers. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. It's the the universality of humanity. Yes, we are all in this together. I think we know that particularly well going through this pandemic. If there's one thing we can learn, among other things, from this horrible tragedy of the coronavirus and its impact on people in this country, but also around the world, certainly, is that we can do things together out of a sense of humanity for each other to help protect each other. We can't control the spread of the virus. We can't control the virus. What we can do is help protect each other from it. I was watching a television last night, and there was a, a, a virologist on, and uh, he said something that was a little bit distressing. He said, we are in the second inning of a nine-inning game in terms of our dealing with this virus. But he also said there are things that we can do and continue to do, even though we're still learning more about the virus. He said, and they're basic things, like keep social distance. And yes, wear a mask. Wear a mask. Now, I'll admit that there are, I know I shouldn't be touching the mask. I know it's one of the things you shouldn't do. But I'll admit I probably wear the mask more than I actually probably need to. I wear it when I'm driving in my truck and going somewhere, even though I'm in an enclosed space. And the reason is, is because I never know if something's going to happen. I have to roll down my window and there's going to be somebody there. And rather than fumble for the mask, I already have it on. I also wear the mask, or at least have it on me, even in the backyard, just in case somebody who's delivering oil or the next door neighbor might come by. I wear the mask not because it protects me. It doesn't. I wear the mask because it protects you and others. That's why we wear the mask. We wear the mask for others. John Shea, in the commentary on this passage, said, The mission of life is to release divine love into the world. To release divine love into the world. That's why we wear the mask. It's part of expressing divine love for our sister and brother, whoever he or she may be. And the universality of that is abundantly clear too, not only in this passage, but also I'm quoting from the book, The Universal Christ by Richard Rohr, which, by the way, I highly recommend. If you are bored at home and need something to read, it's an excellent, excellent book. And I'm quoting on page 194. For Jesus to become Christ, he must surpass the bounds of space and time, ethnicity, nationality, class, and gender. Frankly, he must rise above any religion formed in his name, that remains tribal, clannish, xenophobic, or exclusionary. Otherwise, he is not the savior of the world. This is much of the problem of credibility that we are facing now all over this this same world that he is trying to save. Yes, all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. Jesus is, of course, referring to himself in the third person. But in that last verse for today, 
that they may be one is the universality of creation, of the human creation, that we are one as you are one. So what can we do? A number of things. Many of you have done a number of things. In other, in other words, to express God's love into the world and extend it. But one of the very simple things that we can do is aware, to wear the mask. Not for ourselves, but for the other. In the name of divine love. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. O God, call your people to be one as you are one. Unite your church in the truth of your gospel, the love of our neighbor, and the call to proclaim your reign to all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come to the aid of your children, we pray for those engulfed in grief, those without supportive families, and for all those who are isolated, powerless, or afraid, that all may rest their anxieties in your care, especially our members, our nursing home and assistant living residents, our homebound members, our military, our family, friends, and enemies, and for those we name out loud. Heal our world, heal our bodies, strengthen our hearts and our minds, give us hope and peace. We especially remember this day those who risk their lives to serve in our armed forces. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Raise all your saints to eternal life. Until that day, we give you thanks for the faithful examples of those who have listened to your voice and now rest in you, especially Diego Dick Mora, Mary Roy, and Leslie Banks. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord and your neighbor. And remember, stay safe.